Hey, what's up guys? This is T-Bone here. Welcome back to another episode of playing Gemstone Legends. Today, let's talk about the new hero that's come out, Xandra. So I was able to pull her. So let's talk about her skills. I'm going to explain her passive ability in more detail. And then I'm going to show it in action and then talk about uh, the teammates that she will work well with for you to check out. So let's get into it. Ooh, that sugar is sweet. You got what I need. Sipping on the potion. All right, so first let's take a look at her skills. So I briefly touched upon it in my preview video earlier, but if you take a look at her special ability, she deals damage based on her accuracy. First, she deals damage to a single enemy based on 2,000% uh, of the accuracy, and then all enemies, again, based on 2,000 of the accuracy. So in essence, you're basically attacking the same hero that you initially target twice. And if you level it to max, then you're going to deal uh, 2,500 for a total of 5,000% of your accuracy to a single enemy, right? And then there's a guaranteed silence, and then you can also inflict snare on the enemy. Now, my personal thinking is that uh, what I've seen is that damage based on accuracy isn't necessarily going to be the biggest amount of damage that you can see. And from what I've tested, I felt that it wasn't quite as big as I thought it would have been. And so instead of trying to focus on having her be a true damage dealer, I tried to focus on her survivability. I will talk a little bit more about this before, but if you take a look at my HP right now, it used to be, I think in the 25,000 uh, or maybe even 22,000, and I was dying way too easily. So I bumped it up to about 38,000 health with 3,100 uh, defense and that has helped a lot and if you take a look at the passive ability now then this is what i think is going to be very interesting uh her passive ability increases the deal uh the damage that you deal based on targets missing hp at level one it increases by 12 percent, and if you get to max level at level seven or level eight it goes up to 15 percent. okay so i'm going to explain what this means uh, in a little bit, but if you move on as well, uh, she also has a chance to uh, inflict additional snare um, statuses to an enemy when you attack an uh, enemy that already has snare as well. She also does re uh, reduce the amount of damage that she takes from gemstone attacks so she can survive a little bit better. So what is this new mechanism where you deal damage uh, and you can increase the amount of damage based on targets missing HP? Well, as it turns out in the game, there are a couple of heroes that will deal damage based on the missing health. That means as you uh, deal damage to your enemy, whatever they're missing, a percentage of that becomes the amount of damage you can deal to them additionally. So the lower their health, the more damage they will take. Uh, we do have a couple of heroes that have that and also a couple of um, different parts of the game that provides that sort of damage as well. First is going to be Hanya. So one of the heroes that does this type of damage is Hanya. If you look at her special ability, she deals damage to the target based on her own attack and also 15% of the target's missing HP. So if you take a look at what Hanya does, she'll deal damage to all enemies. And then you can also see the uh, secondary damage that is based on the missing health after she's done it. But then if Xandra is actually on the team, then the amount of damage that's dealt based on the missing health is actually increased, as you can see here. Similar to Ares, what she'll do is she'll deal damage to all enemies, and then she'll uh, deal damage to a single enemy based on the missing health. And as mentioned earlier, the lower the health of an opponent, the more damage it's going, uh, the missing health part is going to be. And so if you see here, the amount of damage that is dealt for those enemies with lower health has significantly gone up. The third part where you're going to get some missing health uh, based damage is going to come from the status snare. So let's take a look. We're going to get that from the active, uh, from the special ability from, um, from Xandra. And I actually have... Uh, so what I've equipped on her, I'll talk about it later, allows me to actually deal more damage here multiple times. And you can see if we take a look at the, uh, if we take a look here, so you can see that the status here, snare, will deal damage based on 30% of the target's missing HP after the counter runs out, all right? And you can see that this actually stacks. So uh, Ursula in this case actually has three stacks of snare. So that means she's going to get 30% of the missing HP three times. All right, and so this is definitely going to uh, take out her uh, her health because uh, 
because she is already missing half, uh, more than half of her health, uh, whatever that's remaining, uh, she's going to get that much damage and then it's going to keep happening uh, for those three times. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to uh, go ahead and uh, let this go. Okay, we're gonna try not to kill the enemies. So we're waiting for the turn to end. After four turns, uh, you should see the amount of damage uh, be applied to um, to all of them. And so as the counter comes down, like you, you notice nothing happens until the end of the turn. So after the end of this turn, uh, let's see what happens. So you can see there's multiple uh, amounts of damage to different enemies. And so this is how this skill uh, works. And that is uh, the third part where you're going to get uh, the damage based on missing HP. Let's go ahead and take a look at the last part where you can get this uh, mechanism as well. So the last part which uh, in the game which you're going to see uh, the missing health based damage is actually going to come from a war trap or a war machine and that is going to be uh, the ballista. So the ballista will deal damage to a single enemy based on their max HP and also 15% of their missing HP. So this is the other part that also uh, deals damage based on missing health and this also does get buffed by Xandra's passive ability. In terms of uh, sort of pairing her, like who you should pair with, you want to make sure that you can pair her with uh, allies that can actually deal damage to your opponents. And a very good way to get a lot of damage early on is going to be uh, a hero that can do um, Assassin's Mark. So Vepris is actually going to be a really good counterpart uh, for this reason. And so what you want to do is you want to try and see if you're able to uh, land a lot of the, um, uh, if you can, try to land the Assassin's Mark onto your opponent. And then what that allows you to do then is you can deal damage to, to them using the, um, using the ability and then the, um, then the area of effect damage from uh, from Vepris then can be used to then um, detonate all of them. And then you also would be able to apply the um, snare, um, the snare status so that you could also uh, then deal more damage to them afterwards. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you how that works. So we're gonna go ahead and apply the Assassin's Mark, and we're actually going to apply it a couple of times because I'm going to be able to uh, use the skill from um, Vulcan to give me more, um, you know, more mana. And then I'm going to go ahead and activate um, this the skill from Xandra. So you can see here, I was able to now uh, deal quite a bit of damage and then uh, apply one single um, you know, status of snare on my opponent. And so what this will do is this will then say, allow me to wait, you know, wait it out. And so uh, after four turns where they go, they're going to take on more damage over time. Right. And so that's sort of the goal is uh, that's how you want to play this uh, sort of setup with her is you want to, you know, have as much damage as you can uh, dealt to them so that they have low health. When they have low health, Snare does come in really handy uh, to uh, to take on those really fast uh, opponents who will likely have multiple enemies go in a row. And what that will do is then that will force uh, your opponents to have to either... Um, you know, dispel or they run the risk of losing health over time, okay? And so after three turns here, what they would do is they would then um, be taken out. The thing with Assassin's Mark is if you're not able to detonate them all and then your opponents end up, um, your opponents end up having multiple turns is that it does run out after a few turns. Whereas Snare, when you, uh, when they run out of turns, you actually deal damage, right? So uh, instead of running out of, um, the negative stats, they will simply get damage applied to them and then they would uh, lose all of their health in that. And so one of the possibilities is to go with somebody like Vepris who does have a lot of um, possibilities for Assassin's Mark. Another way to think about how you can maximize your hero is also to look at who else may have Snare as well. So you can see Xandra is one of the uh, legendary heroes with it. Nithiri and also Atum are also the other legendary heroes that have um, 
snare. And you can see here are the list of epics. Of all of these epics here, I actually think that Surin is a pretty good hero to take a look at because what he does is if you take a look at his ability, he will inflict Assassin's Mark on all enemies and then he will also inflict snare on all enemies. And so he will also be a really good aid to... Um, to Xandra because then uh, you can apply the Assassin's Mark, then Snare, and then also be, uh, you know, and also detonate using uh, Xandra's skill and then apply more Snare, okay? And so this actually is a really good combination, I think. Another one that I think is actually a pretty good one to take a look at is the rare hero, uh, uh, Jadran Jadrana. And so her ability also allows you to deal damage and then inflict snare on all enemies. And then uh, you have more accuracy and more mana here. But as a rare hero, this is actually pretty good. You're dealing damage and then you're also inflicting snare. So she can also work well in, uh, so in conjunction with the uh, heroes that apply uh, assassin's mark so that's another one of the possibilities so if you can use a filter uh, so you can use a filter to take a look here and these are the list of heroes uh, that you could look at to pair with uh, Zandra and of course you can also pair Really, you can pair her with anyone. Snare is one of those abilities where as long as you can deal damage to your enemies, uh, then Snare is going to be something that will allow you to handle those fast enemies with damage that they can always be guaranteed to, to, uh, to be dealt. And so one of the things you can also do is if you have, if you like to play with heroes that do damage over time, uh, such as, you know, if you take a look at the filter, uh, if you have uh, heroes that can deal you know, inflict bleed or poison or burn. These are type of statuses that will deal damage, you know, like every turn. There's a lot of options. You can see there's a lot of heroes that you can use that will apply these statuses. Uh, and if you're up against fast heroes, like fast opponents, then Snare is going to be helpful in this case, where if, as long as you can cast it, then you can just kind of let it let it sit and hopefully cast, you know, your poison, your bleed, and then snare to then deal that amount of damage. And with the increased buff, like the buff for increased damage to snare, uh, then you're going to be able to deal more damage overall. So how much damage are you expected to be able to deal? Let's now go back and take a look at the hero finally. So this is sort of out of order in that I'm actually doing her, you know, uh, gear and everything at the end. But I think this helps a bit in understanding how the hero works. So let's take a look at uh, the ability here. At level one, Xandra's passive ability increases the uh, damage dealt by 12%. And then at max level, it'll go up to 15%. I actually think this is pretty huge because as we saw, Snare will uh, deal damage based on 30% of the health. And so that amount of damage is going to be increased by 15%. I'm I'm tempted to say that this means that the damage will go up to uh, a total of, you know, 30% at max level. So going from, I guess, snare is 30%. So I guess that goes up to 45% of the missing health. I think that makes sense as opposed to 15% of the 30 damage. Usually it's additive. So if this is 30% damage based on the missing health, that, that amount of damage is going to go up. Right, so it'll go from 30 to 42, and then at max level, it's gonna go up from 30 to then 45%. Okay, so that makes Snare a much more compelling type of status to use. And that is why uh, this skill is what makes her unique and different compared to the other, um, compared to the other sort of Snare type heroes. Now, let's talk about her gear. And I'm going to talk about what I learned. So uh, what I found, what I originally started doing was I started focusing by, you know, started by focusing on her critical damage and the amount of uh, accuracy she has because I wanted to maximize the amount of damage she could do. But as I found out, um, the amount of damage that you can deal based on accuracy is still relatively limited. And so what ended up happening was because I didn't focus on her, on her health as much, she ended up dying a lot. So I did make sure that I try to focus on health. And as you noticed before, I did use a hope set. I think that is probably going to be a good, uh, good deal here because you want to try and activate this as many times as possible. And so hope set is going to be really useful. I did put in a critical rate here. It is, you know, just something I I thought that would at least help me because I was able to get my health up to 38,000, right? Uh, where if I put in a health glove, I could probably push up to 45,000. But I thought 
since I was able to go from 22,000 up to 38,000, uh, I could afford to use critical uh, rate here. But I highly recommend focusing on more health and survivability for Xandra Zan uh, so that you don't end up losing her too early. And so you can see I have accuracy for the armor and then for the boots, I actually put in defense here. Again, uh, it is just to make it so that she would be harder to kill uh, rather than you know being very squishy. Murderous Frenzy is going to be a really, really good um, relic for her uh, because it'll, it gives you a chance to apply the uh, the damage one more time like you know activating her skill once again uh, otherwise i think what you want to do is use a increased accuracy type relic on her as well if you have nothing else to put on uh, this will at least uh, increase the amount of damage i can deal and also increase the chance that you are going to land uh, the snare so that's going to be it for me for today, everybody. Hopefully this has been helpful in terms of a hero guide. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you think about Xandra, and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye now.